When Life Gets a Jungle, Five Tips to Help Clear the Path for Your Future Challenges. Daily Dose of Daryl, Viewer's Digest for June 6th through 12th, 2022. This digest includes seven different segments. Remember to open the information section, and when you do that, you'll be able to see places you can fast forward to any day without watching the entire week. We do have QR codes, not only for our channel, but also for our website. Remember, when life gets a jungle, Monday Magic. The real magic is in our heart. Traction is important, especially when life gets to be a jungle, where our faith meets the road. That's so important. As you look around you every day, you see lots of things. Many times you don't even look at the tires on a car, perhaps unless you're buying a car or need a replacement, and then you look very carefully at all the details and all the dimensions. You look at the tread and things like that, and you think a lot about tires, but most of the time we get in the car or the vehicle, and we just go along. Sometimes on the interstate, some people get up to 65 miles an hour, the speed limit, or I've seen others that go by doing about 20 miles an hour faster than that. Anyway, uh, it is important, though, if you think about this, because it's really where the rubber meets the road that is so important. There's just a little section of the tire, four little places that keeps you in line, keeps you under control. And uh, in the scriptures, it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And it's where the rubber meets the road that the trials come and every little bump that's down there, we begin to uh, have to absorb that. In James one twenty two, it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Somebody said once, You only believe as much of the Bible as you put into practice. And so putting into practice our faith is where the rubber meets the road. James one twenty six. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. We know none of us want to uh, consider our religion worthless, so may we put our faith to the test and go forward with vigor. Tuesday Truth Cleansing Getting the garbage out helps you clear the path. In life, garbage builds up. Whether you live by yourself or with a bunch of people, someone has to take out the garbage. The city is helpful in providing containers and trucks and people to facilitate this. God gives us help, too, in our lives. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And so it is, God will help us help get rid of these things in our lives that slows us down. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, It says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear and respect of God. The city's vessels are designed so they can come along and help pick this up and to put it onto the truck. God is ready to help us and has designed us to be able to receive his help. Ephesians 4.22, everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And so the longer we keep things in our lives that are like garbage, they do tend to rot and become filthy. And so we need to uh, pay attention to 2 Timothy 2.21. Whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean, who separates himself from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any good work. And so it is. Our goal in life should be get ready to be useful for the master and be ready for any good work. But first, we must get the garbage out. So take your time today and focus on these scriptures and allow God to help you cleanse out your life. Wednesday Wisdom Recycling 
allow your life to be transformed into new and fresh and usable ways. Today, we're going to look at another barrel, very similar to the garbage barrel we talked about, but this is for recycling. It's the recycling program here in Graham. Most communities have it. It's a different colored barrel, but it's equipped very similar to achieve its purpose. Its purpose can be found in Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 6. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Can I not do this with you as the potter does, like the hand of the potter, so you are in my hands? And so it is, as we look at ourselves many times, we think we are ready for the garbage heap. And yet God wants to recycle us and change us and shape us. And then, too, sometimes we look at other people and think they are garbage and they need to be tossed away. But this reminds us that just like the clay, a new purpose was found for that lump of clay and a new purpose can be found for each of us. So as we stand before the mirror or we stand looking at other people, we see there are two choices. We can choose to toss ourselves into the garbage can, into the garbage barrel, the garbage heap, or we can choose to toss others there, or we can listen to the scripture today where God says, I can reshape you and form you with a new purpose. You can be a part of my purpose. So let's choose the blue barrel for our lives and for others today and truly allow God's recycling program to take effect in our own lives and in others. Thursday thrill, repaired, become useful again. Many places in our lives are broken and need to be fixed. The Apostle Paul reminds us that we are to be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the Master, prepared to do any good work in 2 Timothy 2.21. To be that instrument or that tool in God's hands starts with God choosing us, and God has chosen each of us. I remember in my dad's workshop, his cabinet shop, there were all kinds of tools. Sometimes there were tools on the junk pile that were outdated and broken, and uh, some were in the cobweb corner, useless to their master, oblivious to their calling. Uh, there were tools that were usable and changeable, and there were also tools of usefulness, sharpened and primed, available to their master, fulfilling their calling. You know, some people lie useless in the corner, lives broken, talents wasting, fires quenched, dreams dashed. They're in desperate need of repair with no notion of purpose. Others have hearts open, hungry to change, wounds healing, vision clearing. They welcome the painful pounding of repair, longing to be rebuilt. When you're broken, you must be fixed. And oftentimes that's painful, but God can fix it. Others lie in the master's hands, having been fixed, well-tuned, polished, and productive. They respond to their master's hands, demanding nothing and surrendering all. May we surrender today. May our prayer be, fix me, O Lord, and use me today in your service. Make me a good tool, ready to be used. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray that you now will fix each of us and that we would become a person that you could use daily. Friday flashback, anxious. With life being a jungle many times, people get anxious. Consider the lilies and God's promises today for you. A lot of people are anxious today there seems to be a lot of fear and uncertainty. In our scriptures, we hear these words, Therefore I say unto you, be not anxious for your life, what you shall eat, or 
what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the food, and the body more than raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God doth so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Be not therefore anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Be not therefore anxious about the morrow, for the morrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so today, as you begin to look at these beautiful flowers and this beautiful creation of God, I trust that you will remember these words from Scripture today and let them be an encouragement to you. And know that no matter what you're facing right now, these particular flowers and these particular pieces of nature have faced storms, they faced wind, they faced all kinds of hardships, and yet nothing can keep them from sprouting up again and bringing their beauty into the world. I trust that you will be encouraged to remember that you are God's flower. You have been put here to bring beauty into the world. And only you, with your unique self, can bring the beauty that is within you. So today, I encourage you to go forth and not only have a great day, but thank God that you've been placed here for this purpose. And allow yourself to be all that God has made you to be. And do not be anxious. But give that confidence and that wonderful joy to others in the world. God bless you. Have a great day. Make it a great day. It's the only one you have. Saturday Summary Saturday Summary Monday Magic Traction is important when we experience the bumps in life's road. Our faith is where the rubber meets the road. Tuesday Truth Cleansing is necessary in life for progress and fulfillment. Let us lay aside that which holds us back and learn to take the garbage out. Wednesday Wisdom. Recycling is important in life. Let us identify those things in our life that can be repurposed and reused. Be transformed with a new purpose. Thursday Thrill. Everyone is broken to some degree and must be repaired to be useful. Get fixed today and become like new again. Friday flashback. Today, many people seem anxious. Consider the lilies of the field in God's promises. Sunday silence. What have you done this week to exercise your faith more when the bumps have come into your life? Pause and reflect. What have you done this week to help cleanse your life of any garbage that is holding you back? Pause and reflect. What action did you take this week to recycle parts of your life that you thought were over or used up? Pause and reflect. In what way did you identify something in your life that was broken and how was it fixed and what new thing came from that? Pause and reflect. Where in your life were you feeling anxious and how did you apply God's promises to find peace? Pause and reflect. This is Daryl R. Peebles, the man behind the microphone, bringing you something positive, personal, and professional every day from the Peebles Motivation Bureau. All three divisions, digital, real life, and print divisions, available for you now. 
We have locally ordered books. Contact me directly for signing and delivery. This particular book is helping a lot of people in their journey of growth. Group discounts for local churches, special gift for pastors. I appreciate you, your ideas and support. Keep them coming. I do many other areas. Check this list out. These are my contact points. This is Daily Dose of Daryl. We are responding to the free and gracious gift of God. I'm using humor, the art of illusion, modern technology, and decades of serving God and communities to work every day to uncover the beauty in all people and experiences coming my way, endeavoring to educate, entertain, and inspire. Each dose on this channel can help move us toward a better, healthier, and more informed mind, body, and spirit. I'm excited to be a small part of the expanding of our capacity to learn, love, and forgive, and together leave this world a better place for all. God bless you.